Hey guys, Michael from Cobber vs Grass. Today we're going to be looking at what I consider the best camera application available for Android and it's called DSLR Camera. I'm going to have links in the description below so you guys can download it for yourself. So, let's take a look. Before I get into the app, I'm just going to give you a quick look at the camera application that comes stock on the Nexus 5, which is just the standard Google camera application. It's very limited in terms of what it can do. You've got tap to focus, you've got some additional modes, and you've also got a side pullout bar, which gives you access to things like photosphere, panorama, and lens blur. So you can see the application itself is quite limited in terms of what it can do. Now, don't get me wrong, it does produce some nice pictures, but that's all going to depend on the actual camera itself that you've got on your device. Now what DSLR camera does is basically change it up a little bit and gives you a lot more functionality over things like white balance, the way that the picture is taken, the autofocus, continuous focus, exposure modes, and things like that to give you an overall better experience. Now it may take slightly longer to get the picture that you want, but in my opinion it's worth it to get some really nice shots. So starting off with the actual application itself, you can see here this is the main viewfinder and you can change the actual format of the photos themselves. So if you do want it to go 16 by 9, it will fill the entire screen. But to do that, you are going to have to lower the megapixel count of the actual photo itself. I'm using the full 8 megapixels that comes with the Nexus 5 camera. And you've basically got two goalposts down each side and also some actions here along the bottom. And that's how you interact with the device itself. And we're just going to kind of go around each button to see what it does and how it can benefit you in terms of taking photos. Now, the first thing that we've got up in the top is the flash mode. So you're going to have it on automatic flash, flash on all the time, no flash. Then you've got this option here, which is the flash torch. And what that's going to do is actually turn on the flash continuously. So again, if you do want to take some pictures in the dark, this is maybe a better way to do it, as you're going to know exactly what you're taking a picture of before you take it. It makes it a lot easier to focus on things as well. Whereas if you take a photo with the flash, what it has to do is try and focus with as minimal light as it can. And then it takes a photo and kind of may come out blurry, which is not necessarily the best thing. Now you've also got a ton of different focus modes available to you as well. So you've got here the scan autofocus, you've got continuous autofocus, so what this is going to do is focus on things close up and far away no matter what, which again may or may not be handy for certain people. In my opinion it does come in really handy, so if you do want to focus on something really close up, like if I bring this guy here closer to the camera, you're going to see that it's going to focus in on him straight away, and again if I put him back you can see there that it shifts focus once again. So this is great if you don't really want to worry about the focus and you just want to take a photo really quick, you know that it's going to focus in on the correct thing. The next option you've got then is pre-autofocus. And what this is a more traditional way to focus. So again, you can tap over here to focus. If you want to tap on the camera lens protect from the background or on my LG G watch close up, you can see that it focuses when you tap on the screen. And then when you take a photo, it's going to take a photo on whatever you've tapped to focus on. The next one that you've got then is autofocus. So basically this is good for macro shots. So you can see here it's got AF for autofocus, but it's also really good for macro. So again, if you want to bring things really close up, then you can do. And again, it's going to do its best to autofocus in on the actual subject itself. So again, that's a really great way to be able to take those really close up photos of whatever it may be that you're trying to shoot. You've then got continuous autofocus or infinity autofocus. And what this is going to try and do is focus everything in the actual frame itself. Next one you've got then is autofocus for face detection. So again, it's going to detect faces and focus in on those faces for when it takes the actual photo itself. Now, me personally, I prefer having it on the first option here as it's single autofocus. And what you actually need to do, instead of tapping on the screen, you can see here that it doesn't actually focus, it just moves around the focus point. So if you want to just kind of focus on this Android figurine here, you tap and hold on the shutter button and it focuses, and then when you release it, it will then take the photo. If you want to cancel a focus, so again, if I focus in back here, tap and hold and it will focus, and then if you slide off to the side, you can see here that the shutter button turns to an X, and then it doesn't take the actual photo. Next up down the left hand side you've got white balance, so you've got auto white balance, sunshine modes, transcendent lights. So again if you do want to get the perfect lighting conditions for your subject, again this is a great way to do it. Next up you've got different shooting modes, so you've got single shot, multi burst shot or burst shot, then got a 2 second and a 10 second timer, and then one here which is a 10 second timer and it will take 3 continuous photos. So again this is really great if you're not exactly sure when you want to take the photo, you just want to get as many photos as you can. So if you're doing maybe an action shot or something like that, you're looking at sports, this is a great way to do it to get a ton of photos. Next up you've got a three dot menu, and in here it gives you some options in terms of the actual megapixel count, 
grid options, zebring, which you don't really get in a lot of different applications. So again, you can change the grid here to have just a standard grid for rule of thirds, or here, which is one that I use, which is complex grid. And again, it just has a lot more grid lines on it. You've also got the options here then to change the megapixel count. And you can see the way that it changes depending on aspect ratio. So unfortunately, if you do want 16 by nine, you're gonna to have to go all the way down to two megapixels, which is 1920 by 1080, which don't get me wrong, that is great for posting things on Facebook and Instagram. But if you want something with a higher megapixel count, you're gonna to have to go up to here, which again makes it four by three, but the pictures themselves are gonna be a lot crisper. You then got the option here for effects. Now again, all this is really gonna do is just add a filter over the photo. So again, if I go to mono, it's gonna make the photo itself black and white and all the other features that I've mentioned previously do work fine with these different scenes that you've got on. Speaking of scenes, you've actually got a specific scene mode as well. So if you wanna take some pictures of some food or you're out in the snow or sport or sunlight, then again, you've got all the multiple options in here to get that perfect shot depending on your situation. Over on the right hand side is where you've got all of the other controls including the shutter button. Now with a Nexus device do keep in mind that you are also going to have the navigation controls on here and the home button is quite close to the shutter button as it is quite a small area that you can press so do keep that in mind and that's maybe just one of the shortfalls that I can find with the app is that once or twice when I have been taking photos I have accidentally pressed the home button there. If you've got something like a Galaxy S5 or a Galaxy Note 4 then you're not going to have that issue at all as obviously the home button is a physical button. You've then also got these settings at the top here, which allows you to switch the camera, tutorial, about and feedback, and also go into the settings themselves. So again, you can see here that you've got a lot more in terms of the settings. You've got the aftershot preview, so when you take a photo, how long you wanna see it for, where it's stored, maximum screen brightness whenever you go into the application, enable sounds for the shutter and also the autofocus, which you can turn off, which is a great feature, volume key is shutter button, which you can have turned on or off, GPS locations, and also UI animations, which you can turn off for slower devices, which will definitely help with the performance of the actual app itself. Also in the settings button, you've got the option to switch the camera around. And as you can see, it's then going to switch around to me just here. You can see the camera and the microphone that I'm using. You've also got some options here for the white balance and also the different shooting modes, the exposure, the zoom. So you do carry over a lot of features from the front facing camera, sorry, from the rear facing camera, as you do here on the front facing camera. So again, it gives a bit more in terms of customizability to the actual camera itself. Now, one thing that I would say is you've also got a zoom here on the left hand side of the screen. And again, you can use that to just get a more up close shot. And again, you can use the different focus modes when you are zoomed in as well and then you've also got the exposure here which for some reason if I put it too low has a weird effect but that is only on the camera if you actually look at the application itself it doesn't do that I think it's just a difference between the frame rate of my phone and the frame rate of the camera so that's why the exposure may look a little high in this photo up here in the top right hand corner I'm not sure if you can see you've got the number of shots that you've got left depending on the battery life of your device and also the storage and you can also see if the GPS location is on as well and lastly you've then got the play button here here, which basically just takes you into the gallery of photos that you've taken using the application itself and you've got the option to edit using the Google Photos app and also to share and then you've also got a three dot menu here to get some more options as well in terms of setting it as your background, the settings of the actual thing itself. Now the application is great and I would definitely recommend it. I will put a link in the description below so you guys can have a look at it for yourself. Unfortunately there is a cost, I can't remember it off the top of my head but I will put it on screen now so you guys can see just how expensive it is. And it's not really a bad deal. If you're looking for something that's way, way better than the Google camera application, it's definitely a great app to have. Now don't get me wrong, if you've got something like a Galaxy Note 4, you may not need this as there's a lot of different settings within a Galaxy device compared to a Nexus device. But if you are running stock Android and you do want something slightly different that gives you way more customizability and also just a lot more control over your photos, then you definitely can't go wrong with the DSLR camera application. If you guys have got any questions about the app itself, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to get more great content from Copper vs Glass. Hit the subscribe button. And we are going to have a lot more content coming very soon with all the announcements of the HTC One M9, Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge. And just in general, a lot more tech videos coming very soon. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass. Thanks very much for watching. And I will catch you guys in the next video.